On this week's KSP News Show, the console versions of KSP are fast approaching the certification testing deadline, and more details on the parts overhaul become apparent as squad consider scalable engine parts. All that and more on this week's KSP News Show. Reporting live from the Kerbal Space Center, it's your host, Jin Lee Kerman! Good morning, evening, and afternoon, my fellow Kerbinauts. My name is Jin Lee Kerman. Welcome back to this week's KSB News Show. It is, of course, the new year, and it's always an exciting time for game development in the new year. And Squad is definitely progressing full steam ahead towards the release of 1.1 and the release of the console versions of KSP. And that's what we're talking a little bit about this week, along with some more 1.2 information. Kind of early, I know, but oh well, what can you do? It's kind of exciting. But anyway, let's get on with the stories for today. So let's talk a little bit now about about those console releases. We haven't heard too much information about them over the past couple of months since they were being announced, other than the squad is working on them and they have had a couple of semi-playable demos so far um, in terms of the actual playable builds. Um, but now we have actually got some information that means that they're perhaps not quite as far away as we might think. In fact, they may even be released within the next few months. In the most recent dev notes, it says, Everyone's fully focused on the QA process now. The deadline for console certification is creeping ever closer and Flying Tiger rely on the bug fixes for the Unity 5 version of the game which we're working on. Ted noted that we're currently at peak bug where we can see the number of new issues in QA decrease, balancing nicely against the fixes the developers are implementing. The equilibri equilibrium and trend mean that we can expect to see the number of open issues decrease steadily over the next few weeks. This is of course not just good news for people waiting to play KSP on console, it also means that update 1.1 is coming closer. There's definitely a few weeks of QA testing left though. Now, in case you're not aware, uh, certification testing for consoles is when the game or the build of the game is sent off to Microsoft, Sony, Nintendo, whatever, to make sure that the game runs okay on the console, it doesn't produce memory leaks that could brick the thing, basically make sure that it's safe for consumer consumption. And as basically every game has to go through it, especially I remember Minecraft on the Xbox 360 and Xbox One, it was always a big sort of buzz around around like an update when the update was going into certification testing, because it used to mean that the update was very, very close and that it would be released very, very soon. Now, I don't think this is going to be as soon as that because it hasn't actually been submitted for certification testing yet and that does that process does take a couple of weeks when it is actually in certification testing. Like they say there is still a few weeks of QA testing left um, before they even release 1.1 and I would expect that KSP for the consoles does actually release um, on consoles once 1.1 is uh, is released, or afterwards should I say. But the fact that we are getting close to this deadline could suggest that the KSP console versions could be closer than we initially imagined. Initially I thought they'd be coming out sort of September, maybe even sort of summertime of uh, 2016, but we may even see them in sometime sort of March or April, maybe even sooner. Uh, th that's just complete speculation there, I have no idea when the release date is, guys. And to be honest, Squad always have the mentality of it'll be ready when it's ready, and I think that's probably the best way to go with developing a game as large as KSP. And so, as a result, I don't know when it'll be coming, but if I was going to speculate, if someone was to put a gun to my head, I'd probably say maybe April, March, April sort of time for the release of console version of KSP. And with regards to 1.1, Maybe early Feb early to mid-February, I'm not too sure. I can't confirm any of that. That is not Squad's word. I'm not putting them under pressure or anything there. That's literally just my opinion um, with the, uh, the way development is going on both those platforms right now. That's personally just how I feel. But what do you think of the consoles, um, the console version of KSP, guys? Are you going to be getting it? Are you going to... Uh, completely avoid it, let me know in the comments down below. As always, I'm really interested to hear what you guys have got to say. Anyway, on to our next story for today though, which is to do with some more information about that parts overhaul in 1.2 that I've talked to you about in the last episode of KSP News. And it's pretty cool what we've got to say. Now, in case you missed last week's episode, basically for 1.2 and maybe even some future updates because this is going to take a long time to do, Squad are planning to overhaul the look and textures of all the different parts in the game. Uh, the rocket parts, that is, because obviously they've already done it for the space plane parts. 
and uh, they were pretty vague on their statement of it um, in the last Dev Notes because I didn't really have all that much information to go off. But in this week's Dev Notes, Squad have provided some more information with regards to what they are planning, I should stress planning, to do with this uh, parts overhaul. To quote the Dev Notes, it says Chris, aka Porkjet, has continued planning the start of overhauling the rocket parts in future versions. Special attention is being paid to ways to make parts more versatile while staying true to the Lego approach that KSP has. We're reading suggestions in the forums, and the QA and experimental test teams have also provided useful feedback for this process. Now this is all very arbitrary stuff, but this is the part that caught my eye. One feature we're looking into with special interest is giving some engines the ability to switch their attachment between multiple sizes automatically. We'll have to see how well that would fit into the game. Now I should stress at this point that this is still very much in the planning phase. Squad may decide to completely not do this if they decide that it doesn't work at all with the game. But basically what they're looking at here is introducing a sort of tweak scale element to the engines. I think it is just the engines and even a select few of the engines as well, not all of them, um, into the game. In case you don't know what tweak scale is and if you don't, where have you been? It's basically a mod for KSP that allows you to tweak the size of um, the stock parts in the game and some modded parts I believe. Um, which lets you sort of scale them up and scale them down to sort of fit the rocket or the plane that you're building. I believe it also tweaks the fuel consumption and the uh, max thrust of those engines as well at the same time, so you can't have like a 0.625 meter mainsail with 1500 thrust that could just launch a little thing, a little tiny rocket into the atmosphere with all the power of Thor's hammer and stuff like that. It, 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 it does come with some caveats because obviously it's gameplay and you need to, uh, you need to balance that thing. And I'm sure that if Squad did implement this, they would obviously be looking at that and they'd be looking at the max thrust. So if you had a smaller engine, uh, you've, you wanted to put like a higher thrust engine on a smaller rocket and wanted to scale it down, you'd obviously have to uh, uh, sacrifice some max thrust, uh, but you would probably get a little bit better efficiency because, well, you're having a smaller engine. Overall, I do think that this might be a good idea to implement because it does make parts a lot more versatile and it does sort of fulfill the aim of this parts overhaul that they're trying to do here. And uh, I think it would be pretty awesome to have it in the game because it means just more awesome craft can be built, more ways to build awesome craft. But as always, I want to know what you guys think. Let me know in the comments down below. Do you like Tweak Scale? Do you not like Tweak Scale? Um, do you think this would be a good addition or do you reckon that Squad should avoid it? Let me know in the comments. As always, as I said last time, I read all of them. But that's going to pretty much round it off for this episode of KSP News, guys. Before I leave you, I want to ask you guys a question. The other day, I picked up Star Wars Battlefront. I finally caved. I picked up Battlefront for the Xbox One and I was wondering, do you guys want to see videos on it? Maybe one or two videos? Let me know in the comments or on Twitter or whatever. Let me know if you'd like to see some Battlefront videos. They probably won't be the best quality because obviously it's using the Xbox One's direct recording software which isn't brilliant and I don't have the money to pick up a capture card at the moment as I'm saving up for my, uh, my bigger computer. But if you want to see those then let me know in the comments or on Twitter as I said before. But like I said, that's pretty much going to round it off for this episode guys. If you did enjoy, please remember to like and subscribe for more. My name is Jin Lee Kerman and as always, stay classy.